if I told you these stories about starting at Oxford, about my first kiss, about being a barrister in a racist criminal justice system? Because stories don't fit neatly into one box. We live in an increasingly divided world, constantly asked to pick a side, left, right, black, white, rich, poor, gay, straight, remain, leave, Muslim, Christian, binary, non-binary. A famous writer said that there is no such thing as a single issue cause because we do not lead single issue lives. So what do you do when you don't fit neatly into the box in which society wishes to place you? These seemingly irreconcilable parts of my identity led to me having a breakdown at university. For Muslims, I was too gay. For gays, I was too Muslim. Um, for whites, I was too brown. And for my family, I was too white. I was lonely and I had nowhere to turn. No way of holding these parts of me together. And so I folded into myself. I went from being a religious teetotal to drinking every night, often alone, just to turn off my racing mind so that I could fall asleep. And then I started taking sleeping pills, um, but they didn't work or they stopped working. And someone suggested that I see a therapist. And I remember thinking, no way, no way am I gonna talk to somebody about my problems. That is such a white thing to do. Um, because there was a stigma around mental health in my culture. But then it became a condition of me staying at the university, a condition of me not being kicked out of Oxford was me seeing a therapist, and so I did. And she saved my life. It was like my mind was this Rubik's cube, and she just knew how to move it around and solve the puzzle. And as I joined the professional world, what I realized was that this stigma around talking about mental health wasn't limited to just the South Asian community. It exists in so many work cultures because there is perceived to be something wrong with talking about it. If I had a broken leg, that's fine. But if I'm suffering from mental health issues, no, 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 we don't share that. And the reason I think this is important is because keeping our minds healthy is just as important to our productivity at work as keeping our bodies healthy. And this won't happen unless we foster a culture of honesty in personal identity, one in which we can bring every part of ourselves to work. And I think that if we are serious about diversity and inclusion at work, then we, move, we need to move away from this model of box ticking and dividing ourselves into categories. When I'm asked to speak, um, it's often by one of a company's diversities, diversity networks. So it's either by the BAME network or the class network, or sometimes there's a faith network or the LGBT network. And recently I was invited to speak um, by the chair of the LGBT network of a large company. And as you know, we do these prep calls where we talk about what we're gonna discuss. Um, and all the questions were around sexuality. And at the end, the chair said, oh, do you, are you happy with this? Do you have any questions? And I said, well, um, you know, I appreciate this is for the um, LGBT network, but the LGBT network will have people of color in it, I assume. And he was like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, well, then perhaps we should address issues of race. And he was like, oh, yeah, I, su I suppose that's a good idea. And then I said, have you thought about inviting the BAME network? or the faith network, or the class network. And it hadn't even crossed his mind. And that's, that's no criticism of him. I think it's because we have developed this culture of, of operating in silos. This is a book about X, this is not a book about Y. This is a person who's going to talk to you about X, not going to talk to you about Y. But these divisions in our identities do harm to us being ourselves at work. As I said earlier, we need to put honesty in personal identity at the heart of what we do. And the only way of doing that is through intersectional representation. So that it's no longer just a man talking about his race or a woman talking about her gender or a queer person talking about their sexuality, but all of us bringing all of ourselves to the rainbow colored table. We spend most of our lives at work, 
So why not bring all of ourselves to work? The hopes and ambitions and dreams, yes, but also the challenges and the struggles. Telling the story of who we are in our entirety. Stories have the power to change minds. They can take away dignity, but they can also restore it. The more that you see people being true themselves at work, the more you can do it, because you cannot be what you cannot see. And I want to be able to show people that it's possible to be different and still find a place for yourself, not just inside of your, yourself or your family, but also at work and amongst your colleagues too. Thank you for taking the time to, to, to hear me speak today. Thank you.